Uh, hi, everybody from Sanjeevan. We all love Sanjeevan and we love to have various Sanjeevanites here talking to us, motivating us and guiding us. And uh, the sum total of all this is in the end, we need to do something good for our school. We need to take active participation in all the events like Sanjeevan Centenary Challenge and other things which Sanjeevan is going to launch. There may be an essay competition. There will be guest lectures from other eminent Sanjeevanites. There will be so many events and we need to show our love for Sanjeevan. The first thing, the first event is Sanjeevan Centenary Challenge. Everybody must register for the Sanjeevan Centenary Challenge. Frankly, if I have to be frank with you and if I have to talk in a common room language where it is not very formal, I am very informal, you must register. You cannot say no. Tumara school hai. Tumne udar itna sal khaya, piya, bada ho gaya, chota se bada ho gaya. Now, how can you say I am not going to register for the centennial challenge? It's not fair. Let us be fair to our school. Everybody must register for the challenge and keep taking part, keep finding now new things. Do something for the school so that you will remember, the school will remember you and the school will do well for the next 100 years. Here is one suggestion. Please give thoughts to what should be the shape of Sanjeevan in the next 100 years. Where should Sanjeevan evolve? What is the direction in which you would like to see Sanjeevan evolving? Will it stay like a boarding school just the way it is? Do you see that or do you see something new coming out? Any novel ideas, anything, Vishwashanti, Guru Pool, whatever you feel, write it out, write an essay. Soon we are going to hear an announcement from the school on this subject. So please give it a thought and give the precious time of your life to Sanjeevan this year. Nobody is going to ask you from next year. Till July, give your precious time to the school. With this appeal, I would now request you that uh, please keep coming again and again. Keep listening to all the videos. And now I will hand over to my classmate, my dearest friend, Hemant, Brigadier Hemant Mahajan for the whole world, a retired Brigadier, expert on India's defense strategies. He is sought after by not only people in the civil world, but also in the military world. And uh, his expertise is known by the biodata, which I have attached with the invitation. I'm very proud that one of our school mates has risen to the position where he is giving advice on defense and he is able to analyze what are the enemy's moves, what are the enemy's intentions and I am very proud of Hemant now. Before, without taking any more time, I would like to hand over to Hemant Mahajan. He has a strict time limit. He has another commitment at 9 o'clock. So let us take the maximum benefit of time available. He will talk to us as long as he wishes, maybe 30 minutes or whatever. And then after we'll have a small question answer session. We may resume the meeting for only 10, 15 minutes after if the meeting gets disrupted because he's available till nine. So I'm not going to leave him till 8.59. That is my intention. So if the meeting gets interrupted, Heman, please join again yeah. for only five minutes. That should be fine. Okay. Okay. So I will now pass the focus yeah. on Hemant. Please take over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, firstly, thanks a lot, uh, Deepak, uh, for inviting me uh, on this common room of uh, Sanjeevan Vidyalaya and trying to get some people together, trying to do something for the school. Uh, what you uh, 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 when I introduced myself, uh, I can just tell you this: that uh, six, 1968 was the time when we passed our 11 class. So we can call, call ourselves as uh, a 68 batch of the SSC. And uh, when I talk of my uh, uh, classmates, Deepak was there. Then there was a person called Jain Kulkarni, uh, uh, a person called Narayan Patwardhan who became a doctor later. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, he's no more now. Uh, and uh, and, and, and uh, I mean, uh, many more people, you know. Uh, then our seniors were Ravindra uh, uh, Chavan, etc. Ravindra today sent me a message saying that he is most likely to attend, most likely will attend this. Ravindra is a high court, retired as a high court judge, settled in uh, this place uh, uh, in uh, Nagpur. And in juniors, we had people like Kashikar and uh, uh, Rajendra Harbe. Uh, yeah, I forgot my dear friend Sriram Reddy, who was also the trustee of this school for a 
sufficiently long time. Yes. And when I, uh, uh, you know, uh, wrote a letter to him about uh, uh, about 10, 15 years back because of some reason, you know, those were the days of letter writing. So when he wrote a reply, uh, uh, wrote back to me, his first statement was, Hemant, tuja akshar teodas kharabai jodha shayat hotel. <laughs> I mean, my, I have many weak points and one of them is handwriting. So, well, now, of course, with keyboard, your handwriting abilities are not seen by anybody. So, yeah. to that extent, one has been saved off in not so good handwriting. Siddharth so, Bandodkar, <laughs> And I must tell you about Dayanan Bandodkar. Dayanand, uh, not Dayanand Bandodkar was his father. Siddharth Bandodkar was his name. Yeah. And uh, when uh, Siddharth uh, Bandodkar uh, uh, was a classmate, and I remember after I joined the army in 1973, in 1975, I was uh, doing what is called as the commando course, you know. Commando course is a very tough course. Some of you may have seen that Nana Patekar's movie called Prahar, you know. So yes. maybe it gives you some idea of, uh, you know, uh, uh, how the course is run, etc. Very, very tough course. So we were in Belgram at that point of time. And uh, when, uh, when you read the newspaper, suddenly you saw the news that Siddharth Bandodkar is marrying Leena Chandavarkar. She was one of the most beautiful girls at that point of time. Yes. And my God, what jealous we felt, you know, I said, Ki, here we are doing commando course, uh, Ki, where you don't know whether you last the next day or not. And this guy is marrying one of the most beautiful girls of that time. So I was very jealous. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm sure uh, others know it. That later, though he married Lina Chandavarkar, but the end was not good. Uh, later, uh, he is supposed to have committed a suicide, but then that's a very, that's a different story. But courtesy yeah. Siddharth yeah. Bandodkar, we could go to Goa and all. And <clears throat> there were so many other people in the, I mean, uh, among the seniors, I remember some outstanding sportsmen like Dinesh Shah and Rege and all. They were very good cricketers, etc., etc. So uh, uh, that, that was uh, how one remembered the school. And as far as the teachers were concerned, Chaubar sir was our uh, 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 house uh, house master, as they were called at that point of time, Hasabni sir and uh, Kusum Dai. And of course, uh, uh, Sharad, uh, uh, Sharadji Pandit, uh, he was the principal, of course, but he used to come and teach us geography once in a while. And what I remember of the school is uh, we, we had a lovely time. The staff, the staff, the teaching staff was very, very committed, and one did learn a lot from them. That is one thing I can tell you. And initially, when I retired in 2009, for first two, three years, I was connected with the school. I went there two, three times. And then Shashitai asked me, Ki, can you come more regularly? Uh, I mean, she wanted me to become a trustee or something. I said, thanks a lot for having considered me for this. But uh, in my uh, quest for uh, writing and speaking on national security, I just don't have time for this, you know. But I, I can definitely suggest some uh, other names. So we had suggested a few names at that point of time. And one of the names suggested was, <laughs> of course, Shriram Reddy's. And uh, well, Shriram Reddy's, uh, about Shriram Reddy's, I must tell you something, you know. I told one person that Shriram Reddy's was my classmate. So he shouted, it's a Shriram Reddy's is your classmate? I said, yes. So what, do you know he owns an aeroplane? I said, well, I definitely knew Shriram Reddy's. He was particularly good at nothing. I mean, yes. he borrowed my hockey stick and broke it in a hockey match and never returned it back to me. That was a different <laughs> issue altogether. A hockey stick costed a lot of money at that point of time, you know. So I still have a grudge against him for not returning my hockey stick in the <laughs> condition in which you took it, you know. He says he has an aeroplane. I said, oh my God, aeroplane. That's yeah. very good. And to cut the story short, uh, after retirement, when I went to him, Shriram Reddy not only has an aeroplane, he has a private airstrip. Yes. On top of a hillock, you know. So he yes. said, Ki, Chalo, I will fly you. I said, yeah, I don't believe in your life. He says, But dekho, I, said, padega, I can leave you in uh, Pune in NDA uh, uh, at the NDA advanced landing ground. But from there, you'll have to take an auto rickshaw, you know, because I don't have any vehicle there. So, <laughs> Sita Brady is for you. Uh, he owned an aircraft, and uh, he, otherwise, he is doing a lot for uh, Kokan tourism, especially agro tourism. So, any one of you is interested in tourism, Definitely meet Shriram Reddy. He is doing a lot and uh, he is a, a well known name in that area. Okay, so some very lovely memories about the school, about what we did, the cricket we played, and hockey matches and uh, football matches that we used to have. Uh, uh, really lovely memories, you know. 
uh, and uh, all the teaching staff was definitely uh, very high class and very attached to us and would tell you things, uh, I mean, a lot of things which one remembered for a sufficiently long time in later part of life also. So I think we owe a lot to the school for having uh, given us whatever little success we got in life, definitely credit can be given to the school for having done well and whatever little we can do at this point of time, I think we can do a bit of mentoring and as, as Deepak mentioned, all of us now have, would have retired and done well in some field or the other. So I suppose uh, motivational talks uh, for the students when they choose their various careers, etc. That is where we can uh, contribute, especially in the field of mentoring or in the field of coaching, etc. If at all they want to go to the careers which we went for. So that is as far as the school is concerned. Now uh, Deepak also asked me to talk about uh, the my army tenure. Okay. Uh, what I did in the army. Uh, so I, I very briefly I talk about my uh, army tenure. Uh, I did my MSc and in Defense Studies. Thereafter, in uh, 1973, I passed, uh, joined the Indian Military Academy Dehradun uh, as a gentleman cadet. Uh, and uh, two years training we did, and thereafter I was commissioned into Seven Maratha Light Infantry. Uh, what is great about Maratha Light Infantry is that the troops of this regiment are from Maharashtra. Uh, they are uh, all, all from Maharashtra. The officers are, of course, all India class, but the troops are from Maharashtra. And uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, of course, is our uh, hero of the regiment, etc. So what I will do is the next about 10-15 minutes, I will give you a fast forward uh, on uh, what uh, what we did when I was in the army. Uh, and uh, then if there is anything that you would like to tell me, like to ask me, that is what uh, we can share. Uh, uh, after I finish my presentation. Uh, okay, uh, so <clears throat> I'll start my uh, presentation. Uh, and here I, I think I can take a pointer staff also. Yes, there's a, uh, there's a, a pointer staff and I will, okay. Uh, uh, well, uh, what you see in the front is me only. Uh, that is me receiving a, uh, an award from the then chief of army staff unit, uh, uh, General VP Malik. And this of course is uh, me. Uh, and uh, this is the award we received. It is called at unit citation. It's a quite an important award, but more of it later. Okay. Uh, then uh, sometimes people ask you, hey, why did you join the army? So this is what uh, uh, they say. Okay, I joined the army because of reasons which are given here. I hate sleeping. I cannot live without tension. Uh, and uh, I wanted to miss my home. And I wanted a social boycott. And I wanted to break up with my friends. I believed in Gita. Karam karo, fal ki chinta mat karo. We did only karam, but very little. I love to work on Sundays and holidays. And uh, I have already enjoyed my life in childhood. So I enjoy more now. Now the time to do, etc. So this is how we used to, I want to disturb family life. Uh, you know, why should you? Because then the life lo uh, loves you more if you have a disturbed family life. You know, if you stay together, maybe I'll not. Uh, so well, that is how Indian Army tells you as to why people, many reasons why people join Army. Uh, my, my first association with, with the army was in 1962 in the sense that my Sakka Mavas Bhav, Lieutenant Vishnu Atle, uh, he was martyred in the 1962 war with China in Arunachal Pradesh at a place called Wolong. And this is the war memorial of Arunachal Pradesh where uh, his name also appears. And that is one reason why I wanted to join the army. And this is the place of Wolong where that uh, battle Father was fought. Father Nanak then facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers, and the temples of his gods. When you see the war memorial here, here the names have been put uh, of the people who were martyred in this war. And in the Chinese history, they talk about it. They say that the Indian army fought very bravely at Walong and the Chinese lost very heavily in this. So they have recognized this battle as being one of the tougher battles of 1962. Uh, and uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, of course, is our regimental hero. So uh, when Maratha regiment starts anything, uh, the first is the war cry that we give is Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Ki Jai and then we start uh, whatever we are supposed to do, you know. Uh, and uh, also what we have to understand is uh, uh, there's a lot of commonality between some of the tactics which were used during Chhatrapati's time, what is in Marathi called, called as Ganimi Kava, etc. Uh, that uh, uh, more of it may be some other time. But Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj uh, and uh, uh, the Maratha Light Infantry is very well connected. And our uh, motto is Kartavya Man Sahas, duty, honor, courage. Uh, that is our motto. 
actually when we talk of motors when we talk of regimental thing one can keep on talking and talking but purely uh, because of shortage of time i'll only talk of few things you know because aajkal ka jo zamana hai wo t20 ka hai what are you have to say you have to say it quickly in that 20 over that you have okay here is the map of uh, my regimental center and this map also tells you there's a bugul there's a uh, ashok chakra then here is a maratha light infantry and then there are various awards that we have won over a period of time these awards are all have been shown here various battles which the maratha light infantry has fought etc okay and this is the kind of a training that we do uh, call it weapon training call it bayonet training call it jumping over the fire uh, uh, you know jungle warfare etc uh, kashmir you carry out what is called as the practice carrying out anti terrorist operation you have a hut hut created like that you have in kashmir uh, then you have Uh, various huts that are existing in the north east etc where uh, the insurgents or the terrorists tend to hide and this is the training area which is which is shown on the right side here we have a, what is called as the close combat uh, battle here uh, how, how to fire at the enemy quickly when he comes in various shapes sizes with various speeds etc so very brief account uh, jumping over the fire uh, doing um, monkey rope uh, hiding uh, camouflaging yourself etc So very brief uh, uh, picture, uh, pictorial things of what we do. We did a uh, we did a fair amount of uh, heliborne operations in the sense that getting down from the helicopters, rock climbing was an in thing. Then uh, rafting uh, again was very very important because uh, uh, rivers, the crossing rivers, etc. Here the sniping, etc. is what you can see uh, how a, a soldier uh, you know hides behind a bush and takes on the enemies jumping. Uh, uh flying uh, you know etc and uh, uh, you know uh, various kind of thing and this photograph is, of course i love it because this photograph is a, a, a jumping from 10 meters into the swimming pool uh, is uh, uh, compulsory you know you have to pass that test you have to jump from the 10 meters and when you go for, jump from 10 meters suddenly the life starts flashing in front of your eyes why did i join the army why do i have to jump from the 10 feet Uh, will I be back to narrate my experiences, etc.? Well, yes, most of us did come back to narrate our experiences as to how you felt when you jumped from the uh, 10 meters board for the first time. Well, it was quite tough at that point of time. Horse riding and boxing—they have what is called as the, uh, uh, you know, uh, they call it. You have to compulsorily fight one bout uh, when you are a cadet. then cross country running is uh, 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 you know you run 16 kilometers uh, that race is there that you can see then the nda khadatasla lake etc is what you can see uh, uh, various kind of one thing in the army is you can you get a opportunity to play a lot of games and well i could play, uh, play few games uh, especially uh, basketball to some extent volleyball uh, and uh, hockey but cricket unfortunately not played uh, at all cricket was one game which we played in uh you know uh, in sanjeevan but that was not played played there and incidentally remembering of sanjeevan i do remember to have done a very good job in the inter house matches you know uh, uh, a cricket match uh, because i was very clear i mean ki uh, one most important thing in the cricket is to guard your stumps you know as long as the ball doesn't hit your stumps you remain not out so that i guarded very well and others on the other side like dinesh shah and all scored the runs and our house uh, won the match So that was my contribution to cricket, and people were very uh, happy with my defending my stumps. You know that I had mastered at that point of time. This is Indian Military Academy, Dera Dun, the main building, as it is called, the Jetwood Hall. Uh, uh, you know that is where you pass out, uh, pass in when you go inside. The PT that you do, the bayonet training that you do, uh, and there are many things like passing out parade, etc. Uh, in fact, there are quite a few films available on this. and one could have shown some film but uh, purely because of lack of time i'll not show you but maybe i'll share some links uh, later uh, with you okay and uh, the, so the training in indian military academy is tough and that uh, uh, and uh, you know they say ki they make a men out of the boys you know when you join you are barely 17 18 19 years of age and when you come out uh, you are a grown up and you know how to take life squarely you know and so the motto of the Indian Military Academy is uh, actually uh, is given is written on the wall in English. It says, "Safety, honor, and welfare of your company comes first, always, and every time. Safety, honor, welfare of the men you command comes next, uh, and uh, always." 
your own ease, safety and comfort comes last and at all times. So this is what I've translated when you go on and go talk in Marathi, you know, Desha ki suraksha, Desha ta sadman, Desha ki shema kushan, sarvat pratham, pratek vei ani nehmi. Ani Desha nantar, of course, tumki swata ki soya, swata ka aram, swata ki suchita, nehmi sarvat shavti ani pratek vei. So that was the motto of uh, Indian Military Academy, Dehradun. And uh, it really tells you a lot about what is expected out of you uh, when you join the armed forces. And uh, as they say, ki, one of the things that it says, ki, live by chance, love by choice, and uh, kill by profession. Uh, you hear all kinds of things, uh, these kind of sayings, etc. But uh, uh, I'll go quickly ahead. Now, I uh, after I got commissioned in June 1975, uh, I was an infantry officer. And those of you who know army know, uh, would know that it is infantry which does all 95% of fighting and all the casualties that you suffer in day-to-day -day operations, 95% is by the infantry. And in fact, the honors and awards, especially the gallantry awards, are mostly, uh, I mean, uh, again, 95% uh, is by the infantry only. Rest others like artillery and armored corps, well, they're important in a conventional war, but uh, 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 every, anywhere and everywhere, be it IC heights of Ladakh or Kargil or battles of 1971 or battles of 65, infantry is the supreme. It sheds maximum amount of blood and of course gets maximum number of awards also. That is where I was, Maratha Light Infantry. Uh, and uh, so therefore, all the time you are either on the Indochina border or you are or, or on the Indo-Pakistan border or you are in the uh, terrorist prone areas of uh, Jammu and Kashmir or you are in the Northeast, etc. So I spent a fair amount of my time in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Punjab also at the peak of terrorism in Punjab. Uh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, we had our share, etc. Then on the Indochina border, I have served on the all the borders. The Indochina border gets divided into three places. First place is uh, opposite Ladakh, etc. So this is where uh, we spent a fair amount of time on this border. Then is in the area of Sikkim. This is the area of Sikkim. Uh, um, basically the tri-junction of Bhutan, uh, uh, Sikkim and uh, China, etc. And then is Arunachal Pradesh. So all these areas, we spent a fair amount of time on the border, guarding the border, etc. Okay. Uh, and uh, then uh, we also <coughs> had to spend a fair amount of time on the Myanmar border. Because it is the Assam Rifles of the Indian Army uh, which looked after the Myanmar border, but some, some of it some other time. So as far as Kargil was concerned, I spent a, a full two years there from the period 1982 to 84. Uh, 82, there was no war at that point of time, but we were busy fighting the nature. And heights in Kargil vary from 11,000 feet to about 16, 17,000 feet. And Kargil was in limelight during the Kargil war. And of course, now for the last two years, Ladakh is in limelight because Chinese carried out their intrusions and we did a lot of things there, but uh, more of what we did in uh, that place some other time. So these are the areas, this is the place called Skardu, where the 1909 uh, uh, Kargil operation was planned by the Pakistanis. Uh, then this is various glaciers which are there. Glaciers are basically Himanadi, that is the snow uh, which uh, falls on the mountain peaks, comes down in a flattish area, and that's where the rivers originate. And uh, in fact, most of our rivers like Ganga and Brahmaputra and all, all originate in glaciers, Gangotri, Jamnotri, etc. The glaciers are basically Himanadis and they uh, form a very important source of water as far as we are concerned. And this, what you can see here is K2, Karakoram 2. This is the highest peak of Himalayas in, uh, 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 in Pakistan. Himalayas highest peak in India is, uh, uh, is of course, Kanchan Ganga, which you can see from Darjeeling or from Sikkim. Highest peak otherwise is Mount Everest, which is located in Nepal. And highest peak in Pakistan is Karakoram. And Karakoram is very well known because after losing the 71th war, what Pakistan started was Operation Karakoram, in which they decided to fuel terrorism into our country. And Karakoram had three parts, K1, K2, and K3. K1 was Khalistan uh, the terrorism, K2 was Kashmir terrorism, and K3 was fueling terrorism in the rest of the country. Okay, now this is the CHN glacier. Uh, one can keep on talk, uh, talking and talking and talking on, on this issue. And very recently, just on 15th of January, uh, General Narawane, the Chief of Army Staff, spoke about it. He said, uh, no, uh, no question 
that we can ever vacate to see action in Malaysia. And why did he say so? Because there are some peaceniks in the country who feel to become uh, friends with uh, Pakistan, we should, uh, you know, uh, have a no man's land and uh, we should uh, uh, not, uh, you know, fight with them and we should have peace with them. Well, peace with Pakistan, well, it's desirable. It is not likely to come for a sufficiently long time. So uh, our enmity with Pakistan and uh, China is almost a clash of civilization. And you'll continue to hear more and more about uh, China and Pakistan in the days to come. In fact, recently I did this thing as to what kind of security challenges you are going to face in the year 2022. So those of you who are interested in that part can have a look at the YouTube and see it. Now I'll tell you, uh, just uh, to give you some idea of what exactly we did, I'll talk about Kashmir. Uh, I wrote a book on Kashmir, a proxy war uh, in Jammu and Kashmir, a winning strategy. Uh, fortunately, that book is sold off. Now that book is not available, except the cover which I can show you. And the uh, second book I wrote on Kashmir was in Marathi, Avan Jammu Kashmir Mandya Chupa Yudhache. That also is, uh, people liked it uh, and it did get an award. Uh, so, uh, uh, Deepak, uh, the, it is showing that nine, uh, after 9.55, I think the first part of the meeting will get over. I take it we'll join you again uh, on the same link uh, when the, if the thing gets terminated. Okay. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Another 10 minutes and then we'll meet again. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, because it is showing me the time 9.39, etc. Okay. Uh, this is Kashmir for you. Very broadly, the area what is shown in the green is the part of Kashmir which has gone to Pakistan. In fact, uh, Indian Army in 1947 had reached almost till here. All this area which I am showing you with the red line now was with us. But people at that point of time, the rulers, uh, especially Pandit Jawala Nehru wanted to become friends with Pakistan. So this area was given away. And what came later is, uh, uh, at that point of time, this is called as the LOC, Line of Control. Uh, this is about 778 kilometers long and it is every day there is an action. Uh, today, we are, uh, uh, my watch shows 8.30. Now, there must be at least about uh, uh, 1 lakh to 1.5 lakh troops today on this border, keeping away, sitting in the cold area, uh, waiting in an ambush, trying to stop the terrorists, trying to come inside. So that we have LOC with you. Okay. Then what is shown in the black is actually uh, called as the LAC or that is where the Siachen Glacier is located. Okay. Now, what is shown here red, it was an area which was occupied without fighting by China in 1962 called as Aksai Chin. And uh, the famous sentence we said, ki, not even a blade, blade of grass grows there. That was a kind of a statement that political leadership gave at that point of time. And uh, uh, Kashmir can broadly be divided into three parts, Ladakh up on the top, uh, Srinagar uh, Valley in between, and Jammu Udhampur area down south. So that is broadly Kashmir for you. Now, Kashmir and terrorism. After losing the 71 war, Pakistan started uh, ter uh, sending terrorists and its supporters in Kashmir. Uh, uh, the period between 1972 to 1980 was utilized by uh, Pakistanis to infiltrate into every field in Kashmir, meaning they infiltrated into government, infiltrated into Nopar Shahi, infiltrated into political parties, infiltrated into various NGOs, infiltrated into the media, infiltrated, you name a thing, and they infiltrated there. And in 1981-82, violence started in a big way. And 84, violence went out of, uh, out of uh, proportion. And then that was the time when Indian Army was deployed for carrying out anti-terrorist operation. I have spent all my lifetime in Kashmir in carrying out anti-terrorist operations. The number was as high as six to 7,000 uh, when we started off. Uh, uh, in uh, 2002, it came down to 3,500, 2,100, etc. And uh, you, if you see the last figure, it says that today there are 250 to 300 terrorists. That, that was the number that was, uh, was uh, 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 there in 2014-15. You may ask, now, uh, what now in 2021? The simple answer is the number is same. Because whatever number of terrorists you kill, same number gets replaced by Pakistan, by infiltration etc. So this battle with Pakistan is going to continue for a sufficiently long time because there is no dearth of Pakistan is willing to take on terrorism and especially now with Taliban having come into power in Afghanistan, the problems will only increase. And with help, help from China, uh, Pakistan will never stop uh, and to add to it, 
Now we have to be ready to fight a two front war. This map actually, this slide actually depicts as to how terrorists try and infiltrate into the country. What is shown here, uh, this pink line is basically the line of control. You can see it here. And this side is Pakistan. This side is Pakistan. And this side of the line is India. And our Indian army basically guards this kind of a border. Now, how does terrorism start? They, firstly, there's a recruitment rally. Thereafter, they are given training. Thereafter, they are done funding. Thereafter, they carry on what is called as the religious indoctrination. And they, uh, once the training is complete after seven, eight months, then in a group of five to 10, they infiltrate into our area. Uh, and 95% uh, get killed on the border only or on the LOC. About 5% do manage to get inside. And they are the ones who replace the terrorists who have been killed. This is exactly what we did all our 10 years. Now you can see a uh, seed here, if there are those five terrorists that we had killed. You can see them here. And uh, the, you can, uh, uh, I hope you have detected me here. That is where I'm standing. <clears throat> and you can see uh, ammunition and water bottles and uh, uh, gun, uh, hand grenades and AK-47 rifles, etc. But I would want you to focus on this person. This is uh, Major James Thomas. Major James Thomas is putting on a, what is called as a bulletproof jacket, uh, and uh, his CEO decided, and of course that is that side is me. James Thomas was a very brave officer. He had taken part in three encounters. In each of the encounters, he was able to kill a large number of terrorists. But in the last encounter, uh, he was uh, martyred, uh, and we lost him uh, in uh, in Punch. Uh, the year was uh, 2006, and the highest award of 2006, Ashok Chakra has been given to late Major James Thomas. You can see him there, a very extremely brave officer. And you can see the other troops uh, who are there in this area. And this is what we used to recover uh, from the terrorists, AK-47 rifles, five magazines in which to put ammunition, 20 ammunition, 500 rounds, UBGL means under barrel grenade launcher. You fire grenades, hand grenades, 36, radio set antenna one, Indian currency, 50,000. Audio cassettes. So you'll ask me, what is audio cassettes? Those were the days of audios. Uh, you know, audio cassettes are basically motivational cassettes, uh, which motivates the terrorists to uh, remain uh, on his toes and uh, do something for a jihad. Pencil cells, wristwatches, improvised exclusive devices, detonators, mines, PKs. This is the standard stuff which the terrorists carry. Now you can see another set. Uh, this, this is the explosive, PEK, plastic explosive, with which you make your, uh, you know, uh, improvised explosive devices. These are the Pakistani mines. These are the water bottles. Every soldier carries, every terrorist carries one water bottle. These are the pack, etc. These are the, uh, uh, you know, uh, blanket, etc. which they carry. Uh, okay. Now, this is always captured. This is the Kashmir Valley for you. That is where presently the terrorism is uh, confined to. And um, uh, this valley is actually a valley of Jhelum Valley, uh, which is about 130 kilometers long and about 30 to 40 kilometers in the breadth and surrounded by mountains, the great Himalayan ranges and Kishtawa ranges, etc. on all sides. Today, terrorism is restricted only to Kashmir Valley and the strength of terrorists today uh, active uh, in the valley is between 150 to 200. Every day, Indian Army kills one to two terrorists, but their replacement keeps on coming. Uh, this was Lieutenant Navdeep Singh from my uh, battalion uh, who got Ashok Chakra uh, sometime back. Okay. Now, I tell you about the, a bit about Northeast. Now, Northeast is another area where uh, I got posted repeatedly simply because of Northeast consists of Assam and seven sisters like Arunachal Pradesh and uh, Nagaland and uh, Man uh, Manipur, Mizora and Tripura, Meghala, etc. And up on the top, what is not written here is uh, is Sikkim. Okay, and this is that narrow corridor which joins, uh, you know, uh, northeast with rest of India. Now, <clears throat> northeast we had a very serious northeast has got three security problems. If you look down south, the problem is of illegal Bangladeshi migration. And they have come up in a very large number, and they are in thousands and lakhs, even in Maharashtra also. But well, that's a separate issue. Uh, up on the north, 
connected with the Chinese border, uh, especially in Arunachal Pradesh and Sikkim, is the Chinese conventional challenge, uh, which will uh, which we have to face. And in remainder Nagaland, the insurgency which uh, keeps on going on. Very recently, one would remember that in Nagaland an ambush took place uh, in which we lost uh, CO 46 Assam rifles. Colonel uh, Tripathi, along with his wife and his uh, child of uh, eight years old, one would remember that. So the Nagas, uh, there is uh, now presently the status is Arunachal Pradesh is free of terrorists, Meghalaya is free, Assam is more or less free, but state of Manipur and Nagaland, uh, the insurgency is still there and the Chinese are trying to reignite this and that these are the areas in which we spend a fair amount of our time and the same kind of thing which we did in Kashmir, Kordnan search carrying out raids on the terrorists trying to stop them, trying to kill them, etc. Uh, we also uh, were uh, posted in uh, in our island territories, especially in the Andaman Nicobar Island, because Andaman Nicobar Islands is uh, has to be guarded. So this. Yeah, we can see the screen. Yes, you can. Uh, so uh, when we got stuck up, uh, you know, uh, I was trying to tell you that we spent uh, uh, some time in Andaman Nicobar Islands also. Uh, it's a lovely area and the challenges there are huge. There's a fair amount of encroachment that takes place. There's a poaching. You know, the challenges that the country faces is different in different areas. The challenges that we face here in Andaman Nicobar Islands is poaching. Poaching means uh, the uh, you know, the fishing trawlers of other countries come and uh, fish in your area. Just for your information, as far as the United Nations laws of seas is concerned, uh, from the, the coastline uh, up to 200 nautical miles, this is called as the exclusive economic zone. You can see here uh, there's a, a line uh, which uh, line which is which is being drawn. You know, uh, <clears throat> this line. This is 200 nautical miles and this line is called the exclusive economic zone. So this sea here belongs to us and anything that you see in this sea is yours, meaning fish and uh, you know, other natural resources like uh, uh, you know, various kinds of minerals that are there lying at the bottom of the ocean, etc. So all these things belong to us. Okay. Now, unfortunately, in the island territories, since our, uh, you know, you, I'm sure you know that there are... Uh, uh, as far as Andaman is concerned, there are 572 islands, out of which only uh, about 27 or 28 is a habitation there. Others, there is no habitation. And the population of Andaman is less than about uh, 3 lakhs. And <coughs> unfortunately, national security is a, such a weak point, uh, at least in earlier days, as the country is concerned, that after the tsunami in, uh, in Andaman, there was a reconstruction required to be done in Andaman. However, uh, since there was no reconstruction labor available, they got labor from Calcutta, basically the Bangladeshis. They did the reconstruction. After that, they never went back. Uh, I mean, look at this country, you know, Aao Jao Ghar Tumara, uh, here an, a foreigner comes, does work in your area and permanently settles there. Well, at least all that I can tell you now is that presently the government has given uh, priority to uh, national security because uh, there are the challenges of national security, especially with uh, our vast and uh, some uh, maybe we can talk about some other time. Okay. Uh, uh, the army life, uh, I joined in 1973, retired uh, from the army in uh, uh, 31st January 2009. Just a few days from now, I'll complete uh, 30, uh, 13 years of my retirement. And uh, there are a lot of people whom you miss, you know, meaning uh, the starting number and the number of when you end your journey is not the same and you lose quite a few people. And here is one person whom I lost in 2008, Hawaldar Chandraban Pawar. He was awarded Shaura Chakra at that point of time, 12 November 08 to be precise, just a few, uh, one year before I retired. Another person, Hawaldar Santosh Raikar, he was awarded Kirti Chakra. Uh, he killed four terrorists and you can see Mrs. Pratimatai Patil our president at that point of time giving him the award of Kirti Chakra. Luckily, uh, he is alive, a brave person. And uh, what, uh, all these people, when they retire, then they uh, try and join some security company here and there, you know. So this chap is now uh, there, a security in charge of Infosys. And Infosys is very happy with it, only for one reason. They're not too much worried about the terrorists, but Infosys has got a lot of 
uh, staff, uh, which are, uh, you know, girls, and there are uh, huge challenges of security as far as girls or the lady employees are concerned. Now, uh, Santosh Rai has taught them boxing, taught them uh, uh, anam combat, taught them judo and touch wood. Ever since Santosh Rai has come there, they haven't had any mishap in that company. Hats off to Santosh Rai. Now he's making the women employees uh, secure of the Infosys. And that is what generally happens in most of the places. Uh, you may <coughs> like to know that immediately after the 26-11 attack, most of the five-star hotels went in for security, which was all retired army personnel. And today, most, uh, most of the places, the security is generally of the retired army personnel. And uh, if terrorists ever come there, they are going to have a tough time. That's all, that's all I can tell you. Okay, Satosh Rai. Uh, we won a few awards during my time, and this was uh, uh, the unit citation. It is basically an award which is for the whole team. My battalion, 7 Maratha Light Infantry, which I commanded for four years. Uh, we killed about 60 terrorists during my time over a period of about three years plus. And um, uh, uh, the, uh, for doing a good job uh, and, of course, fighting the Pakistanis on the LOC, uh, there, there are a lot of uh, criteria which is there. You know, you have to uh, keep on firing on the Pakistanis. You have to ensure that no infiltration takes place in your area. You have to ensure that any terrorist who manages to infiltrate is uh, 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 neutralized in a fair amount of time, you know. So uh, we did a good job and uh, uh, during my uh, time, we got, uh, uh, my battalion got 18 awards for which I can uh, take the credit, including Yuddha Seva medal for myself, which was, uh, 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 which is my award. And uh, uh, just to tell you that uh, uh, after a battalion does well, uh, uh, the battalions who do very well are sent uh, uh, on the United Nations mission. And uh, today, uh, my battalion is in Africa, in Congo, doing a UN mission. And sometimes I feel so sad, you know. I was uh, majorly responsible for this kind of a thing, but I can only watch them uh, once in a while on a video call. Well, uh, that, that is how life is. These are the various awards that we got. And uh, here, if you see carefully, you can see this award of Yuddha Seva medal uh, for me. Maybe you won't be able to read it, but this is uh, comes from the president. It says that my Bharat ka Rashtrapati Arki Narayanan, Arki uh, Yuddha Seva, uh, Arki Uchcha Koti ke Yuddha Seva ka uh, uh, compliment karte hoye, Arki Yuddha Seva Middle se uh, award karta hoon. Or the date and time is given. Then there are other things like unit uh, unit appreciation. Uh, uh, this is the here. And then, of course, uh, uh, another type of awards. Okay. So, the, the, uh, fair amount of awards. And this is again that uh, uh, this photo uh, I cherish because that is the most important award as far as uh, we are concerned, you know. Uh, uh, and that is the unit citation. And uh, if you have seen now, uh, 15th of January was the Army Day. And this is the day on which Army Day parade takes place. And uh, then uh, unit citations are given now. Uh, on an average, every year, three to four battalions uh, get unit citation. So this time, another Maratha battalion, four Maratha light infantry has been awarded unit citation and some other battalions. So that is that. Uh, so this is uh, my uh, second last slide. <coughs> the, uh, famous saying, when you go home, tell them of us that for your today, we give our tomorrow. Uh, we have lost a fair amount of blood. I have personally lost a fair amount of people during my service time. And that is what actually uh, makes your journey uh, fairly difficult later, you know, when you realize that while you reached home uh, safely, but many of your colleagues did not. And this actually is the uh, last uh, slide. Uh, uh, it says, you can, if you can read it properly, God and the soldier, all men adore in the times of danger and not before. When the danger is past and all things righted, God is forgotten and the soldier is slighted. Are bapre, are deva. You remember only in the time of difficulties. If the time, uh, good time comes, uh, most of us from, uh, forget God, who may have done something to help you, save you, etc. Something similar to the soldier. Uh, well, uh, I can all that I can say right now is now uh, 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 there is a fair amount of disinformation campaign which takes place against the Indian Army because the, uh, uh, the enemies of the country, that is China, Pakistan, terrorists, Naxos, etc., feel 
that there is one institution which is stopping it uh, from uh, you know breaking india you know and that is the indian army so what do they do they carry out a fair amount of disinformation warfare against in, uh, against indian army they carry out lot of propaganda warfare in which newspapers of india are involved uh, columnists of india are involved uh, so called uh, uh, you know uh, let us say so called intellectuals are involved who will keep on telling you a lot of nonsense i'll just give you uh, one example as to how uh, and this is done in a such a manner that uh, you know this uh, that uh, every day something or other comes up in the army should have done this in the army did this wrong uh, armed forces special parts act should be done i'll just give you because since i'm talking very vaguely i'll just give you uh, a few examples you know which happened recently uh, which you also must have heard you know when the chinese carried out an encroachment in ladakh uh, suddenly news started coming the chinese have concentrated the uh, indian newspapers telling you chinese have concentrated 50000 troops on the border the people got scared my god 50000 troops there you mean to say if the indian troops were waiting in pune and mumbai for them no obviously not chinese have got their most modern guns well our guns were not hiding in devlali or nashik where their camp is you know they are also in uh, that place so chinese have got their aircraft there well yes even our aircraft from uh, logo which was required has, uh, was there chinese have got uh, now they talked about robotic soldier you know now some of you will have a sufficient amount of science background and all robots and robo soldiers and mechanical soldiers well robo soldiers are okay in a star war but it doesn't help uh, in that era which are there they started saying that chinese are using drones to supply hot food to the, those uh, uh, their soldiers there while well, indians can't do it well that is not possible they talked about microwave weapons you know and imagine our the most idiotic part is that our media our experts so called armchair strategists puntavarti basthele shahane trying to tell us ki oh no 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 you should be scared of chinese they are seven and a half feet tall their economy is the strongest uh, second strongest in the world their army is the strongest just sign on dotted lines and listen to what chinese are, uh, want to do you know uh, don't do anything to them otherwise you'll have a tough time and uh, 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 i i have been sending the links of my video talk etc to deepak and some of you who may be interested can uh, follow it later on the youtube you know i have been talking on all this issue and on the youtube if you go and uh, uh, just put my name there brig hemant mahajan b r i g that is the short form for brigadier hemant mahajan uh, and obviously you will see a youtube channel and you will see my face uh, as you see me now and there are more than 300 videos we went in for a Uh, th- this online kind of a thing hell of a lot uh, especially after the lockdown started because before that the concept was vyakhyan malas and seminars and you know meeting people physically but uh, since uh, uh, may 2020 all that is stopped you know and now we are focusing entirely on this so those of you who are interested can have a look at that i have spoken a lot about and this channel is only about uh, uh, let's say national security and india's national security okay so how china is fighting a hybrid war with you how they do propaganda warfare how they do psychological warfare etc is what i uh, you would like to see and uh, try and uh, hear it try and see it try and share it because what one is doing now i always maintain that all of you now i take it would be retired uh, uh, most of you at least would be retired so what do we do now with, now that we are retired now that we are not no more active all of you should become information warriors by information warriors means the disinformation which comes in your mobile disinformation which comes in your uh, laptop or on anything on the social media you should not let it go ahead of course i am uh, 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 focusing only on uh, the national security part of it and there is so much of disinformation that they came you know people some uh, experts started uh, trying to show their knowledge of biology etc by saying that this virus is called corona and this is called covid 19 covid 19 stands for something which i never understood it is not covid 19 it is not corona it is chinese virus even should be very clear about it uh, don't try and exhibit your unnecessary knowledge uh, you know but when the uh, mutation started they started talking of the indian virus you know indian mutations this is how stupid we indians are you know chinese virus instead of calling it chinese they are calling it corona okay we are calling it covid 19 but anything happens to india omicron no the indian uh, uh, variant you know that is how the chinese are trying to make a fool out of everybody but more of it some other time 
do all of you become information warriors because a lot of the mainstream media has lost its credibility let me tell you in no uncertain terms you know i'm and i'm talking of newspapers like times of india indian express if i was to give you an advice i would say don't read newspapers don't read tv channels at all you know because they are become more or less a source of disinformation rather than information and i'm only of course focusing on uh, focusing only on the uh, uh, in, uh, in fact when somebody asked me so how do you do information warfare i said the best thing to do is you know tell the tv channels the news channels that they should not broadcast more than one hour a day you know other 23 hours since they don't have any work while work so they'll keep on creating news just to give you today's example they said ki sir the bbc chap rang me up and he says ki uh, one girl rang up he says ki sir general bakshi said that soldiers who fought in second world war was mercenary what do you want to say about it i said yes well it tell me general bakshi like general bakshi that are 35 lakh soldiers who are there everybody has an opinion on every subject so because he's commented something you want me to comment on something then you will take brigade himan majan said this so you'll ask uh, colonel xyz what do you want to say about uh, brigade mahajan and you'll create a story and carry on and on and on and general bakshi did not and, and i know general bakshi quite well you uh, some of you may have seen him a person with big mustache and he talks with lot of passion on uh, times now etc you know uh, well he's a nationalist and uh, uh, he will never say this mercenary etc he was being quoted out of context that is what they want to do you know like general malik gave an interview to karan thapar and karan thapar misquoted him as many times as he uh, as he wanted to this is what misinformation disinformation warfare is you listen to the whole thing general malik is never said anything of what current thapar is saying you know but uh, there are such newspapers such portals uh, etc who uh, have do too much of a disinformation warfare so all that i can say is you know try and uh, not become a victim of disinformation warfare have a faith uh, in the in your army it is your army have a faith in your own country have a faith in yourself i think the most important contribution that we can do as indians is whatever field we are at if we become world class there we will help the country to become world class if you are a teacher become world class teacher become dronacharya if you are a student of course none of you are students but let's say your grandchildren and uh, maybe students you know some of at least tell them that they should beat arjuna arjuna was supposed to be the best student in the uh, history you know and if you are still uh, mentoring somewhere you should be better than dronacharya you know if you are a researcher then uh, you, you become better than um, uh, microsoft and all if you are heading a technical institution you should go ahead of nasa and all uh, uh, you know uh, i mean any field that you are into unless you become world class the country is not going to prosper and uh, when they did a research on this countries uh, i mean how uh, why countries become great you know there are many reasons is it because of the geography is it because of their location geopolitical location is it because of the leadership is it because of weather etc well there are many factors but the most important factor which makes a nation great is the common citizen a common citizen says what i can do for the country whichever field you are you don't need to be a soldier holding a gun in your hand you know if you become world class help your country to prosper do some constructive activities rather than stone throwing and uh, uh, sending negative post and trying to lower morale of everybody and trying to stop uh, going for agitation terrorism and all do anything constructive uh, i suppose at our stage of life mentoring is something which we can do uh, a lot to help uh, the nation to prosper this is what i think we should do so read that uh, last line now i'll just uh, uh, read and then finish off Uh, it says it is the soldier, not the reporter, who gave us the freedom of press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who gave us the freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the politician, who ensures our right to life, freedom, pursuit of happiness. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, sleeps beneath the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag. Unfortunately, I have seen too many of them, and that is uh, the saddest part of my life. Uh, well, I'll stop here now. Uh, maybe we can have some interaction uh, uh, for about five ten minutes, and then I'll try me. So I'll uh, end my uh, presentation, and uh, then maybe if there is something which uh, anybody would like to say, anybody would like to ask, comment, agree, disagree, uh, completely disagree, etc.
really hats off to you hemant really hats off to you what a perfect speech perfect time management you did not dwell on anything more than uh, required you gave us so much information in such a short time and you never were groping for words the whole thing was coming out fluently non stop this is how a speech should be i think many of us can learn the art of speaking thank you so deepak, much and you are really done wonders deepak deepak yes. deepak i have a i have a personal request you know, yes. i never knew you were so good at praising people you know but maybe what you said just now you can say that it is not in front of my wife once you know once in a while you know <laughs> because you know by listening to what you said i am convinced that i have a great guy I will. So it doesn't think so. I will. I will. I will tell Donner. I will tell him. Okay. I tell her. I will. I have met her. I have met her. I have met her at your house. You just heard me. Jeeva, I know. So what happened? Right? Oh. Ah. Maybe we need a more offer. You know. To convince her that she is not the right guy. I will talk to her. Yes, she is a nice lady. Behind every successful man, there is a lady, and that woman is your wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I tell her that. So yes, that yes, yes. 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 Yes, all that i can tell you is you know i speak uh, hell of a lot i write in lot of newspapers i'm sure you would have seen seen me in i have written for all the marathi newspapers that is uh, lok satta maharashtra times everything uh, presently i have a column in four newspapers uh, i have a column in samna i have a column in tarun bharat i have a column in sagar i have a column in many places and then i uh, used to write in for english newspapers like indian express etc but that that now is stopped because of um, uh, some technical issues that i'll tell you some other time Uh, tv you will see my face uh, almost every day for a minute or so uh, commenting on issues related to national security etc but i think what what is most important is you know that's it what i want to tell you uh, uh, ki, uh, suppose you have a knowledge on any subject and you want to pass it on uh, somewhere you know uh, the media doesn't give you adequate uh, this thing you know but the, the social media has now given you a power of be- becoming an editor becoming an uh, you know a tv anchor and all and whatever you want to say about any issue you just put it on the youtube and anybody will go there and mm-hmm. uh, see it. i know deepak you also have your youtube channel and uh, you are also doing uh, something in the uh, area of spiritual things you know so i think the power of social media can be used for a good cause that's all i am trying to say okay. yes now any question good evening good evening shall i speak yeah yeah please go ahead i am prasad godbole i joined uh, your uh, our school the year you all passed out so we haven't met there yeah uh, my uh, question was uh, as you rightly said you absolutely don't get any news on television worth the talk but i always used to think that finally abhi tv nahi dekhta hu i don't watch uh, news there so to for news finally we have to go to some newspaper and uh, i always thought basically the english national newspapers would be the least uh, partial of the lot so since you have pointed out to them which one should you say ki ye loge to you will get uh, uh, proper uh, okay your question is asked you know you asked a question ki which uh, newspaper should you uh, trust you know the short answer is nobody uh, you know the, the reason is the yeah. media is out making money today do you know how much of money is been given by the chinese to purchase us you know the kind of money i'll just give you one example which will i suppose uh, will make you understand things better you know the, two of the biggest newspapers in america is a newspaper called washington post and new york times you know now these are the two biggest newspapers and american media they claim oh very very free and very this thing and all now if you take last one year of this american media they have uttered not even one word against china but they have cursed their own president 20 times simply because china gives them a budget of 500 crores every year so they find it it is cheaper to curse uh, uh, joe biden or whichever biden is there at that point of time you know and not curse china this exactly is the issue you know they uh, no i'll just give you exa- uh, today uh, when you talk of a news you know new uh, uh, i would recommend to you uh, if at all you want to listen to the news that is listen to doordarshan that is one which is uh, reasonably okay uh, pti 
प्रेस ट्रस्ट ऑफ इंडिया टू सम एक्सटेंट इज ओके मतलब मोस्ट इम्पार्शल एंड थर्ड इज अनदर थिंग कॉल्ड ए एन आई ए एन आई इक्वल टू ऑफ पीटीआई इन द वीडियो जर्नलिज्म एशिया न्यूज इंटरनेशनल व्हिच इज बेसिकली अ पोर्टल ऑफ ऑल न्यूज़पेपर्स पुट टुगेदर यू नो दे आर जनरली ओके बट व्हाट आई वांट टू टेल यू इज इन दिस न्यूज़ देयर आर टू पार्ट्स इन एनीथिंग वन इज न्यूज़ एंड सेकंड इज व्यूज एन ई डब्ल्यू एस एंड व्यूज न्यूज़ इज 13 पीपल किल्ड uh in a firing by indian army now thereafter what times of india is given all views okay first question is uh, how were uh, 13 people killed because of army's mistake the naraz are very unhappy etc etc is that how it was killed no sorry that is now not how it was killed six people were killed because of a wrong information a wrong this thing the, the nsc and k uh, group was coming but after that uh, uh, after the remainder seven people Uh, started attacking the army this thing there are videos available in which they came with da no you know nagas no nagas are all uh, head hunters you know they, they with a chop of a da they uh, uh, can cut your head off you know and one soldier's neck was cut one soldier's hand was cut that is when they opened fire and three people were three more uh, civilians were killed in that then they started attacking the army camp you know uh, in this particular camp Uh, the, the army decided not to open the fire but they, when they reached the area of what is called as the court court is a place where you keep your weapons and all arms and ammunition there you know now you can't let that fall into their hands you know they burnt your barracks uh, that is when the fire was opened up and then again people were killed so the short story is out of the 13 people were killed seven had been killed uh, in self defense actually more number of people should have been killed nobody can dare to attack uh, uh, army like that or uh, do this you know but and after this what do they say the armed forces special powers act should be removed now what is armed forces special powers idiots like times of india you know i uh, uh, utterly idiotic newspapers you know armed forces special powers act has got nothing to do with uh, this killing this was killed because they attacked and even in self defense they would have been killed if they would have attacked a convoy yeah, you know retaliate you, know, retail you know so i don't want to get into the uh, this is a typical thing and then there are people you know uh, who uh, will uh, they think uh, 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 anything happens curse the indian army this there are strong uh, uh, people of ngos there are strong uh, you know uh, activist brigade now one of the activist brigade went uh, into supreme court and supreme court he said the any encounter which takes place in manipur you should uh, 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 you should have it investigated by the police now when army carries out a job it is not police who is supposed to investigate army comes there because the nation has called you there you should launch an fir you should have a judicial inquiry now can can indian army then the only way in an army can do anti terrorist operation is he a supreme court judge should be with the leading scout and he says fire you open fire he says don't fire you don't open fire can you see a gun so mr chandrachud one of the most idiotic person i ever seen in my life and i make no bones about it he is a supreme court judge you know the kind of judgment that is given the kind of damage that is done to the indian army is done is more than what china and pakistan has done okay you are making army powerless that is the whole issue you know if you don't want army there remove it from there remove army from there because a country can decide ki yes manipur peace is returned now no army is required police can do the job who stopping you the manipur government wants the army there okay so uh, this mainstream media uh, read times of india as uh, newspaper uh, read the kind of news that times of india gave Uh, when this uh, 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 intrusion was going on, you know, read uh, and the uh, kind of comment they will make, you know, and trying to blame the, uh, uh, you know, uh, Indian army is not able to negotiate. How do you negotiate with the enemy here? Yeah? <laughs> they don't want to go back, so they don't want to go back. So tell me, no, don't you know? I mean, <laughs> they don't want to go back. They are not going to go back, you know. And then there are uh, 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 people. There's a like, no, no, no. I've seen a some satellite, you know, and satellite says that the Chinese army not only is at finger four, but it is at finger five also. Now, what is finger four? Are you aware of what is finger four? What is finger five? Do commercial satellites do they give the kind of a resolution? Those of you who understand satellite imagery, let me tell you, Google Map can't show you fingers uh, in the area of Galwan and all. 
okay google map can show you uh, how to go on the senapati bapat road or something like that you know but it doesn't have that resolution to show you men etc you know for that there are other things available but uh, this kind of a call it investigative journalism call it uh, you know trying to break the news trying to say ki ah, well i know something here i heard pakistani tv saying it are pakistani tv ne ye thodi bolna hai ki indian army is doing a good job chinese uh, i went to global times and global times is saying this are why are you being spokesman of global times yaar global the problem is why chinese find it free to enter our every media house of ours i repeat the word again with lot of responsibility enter our, uh, all our media houses and i i, I must do you tell you one example straight away the chinese said uh, uh, you know but taiwan's uh, taiwan is a country you know all of you know taiwan of course so they said ki taiwan ka uh, abhi raising day hai so the indian newspaper sh- should not take out supplement about taiwan and Th- times of india did not take it out indian express did not take it out ask times of india editor why didn't you take it out if the government had said don't do this they would have said no no vyakti swatantra abhi vyakti swatantra media just thing all utter nonsense chinese tell them anything and they uh, the chinese said ki do not talk of tibet do not give publicity to dalai lama why should our media listen to them whether to give publicity to dalai lama or to many others you know because dalai lama is china <laughs> number one okay so uh, that is how the media houses get sold and and they are making money uh, by this disinformation campaign that is what i can tell you and something happens of course there are some now some very highly national channels have also come you know who keep on shouting hoax mm-hmm. Uh, especially uh, arnab goswami and uh, times now and also i can also tell you this much that uh, uh, these days uh, uh, times now uh, 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 republic even this uh, uh, cnn ibn or whatever that thing is called or even india today are giving a fair amount of responsible news you know there are just few odd uh, 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 few odd anchors who are idiotic uh, you know but uh, otherwise most of them Uh, are uh, are speaking a hell of a lot you know be it uh, uh, the, you know and there are so many anchors who keep on coming you know but 95% of them especially the three four channels that i spoke about are give but if you want news best is to go to doordarshan if you want views then of course uh, 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 go to uh, other uh, other you know okay yeah a slightly longish answer but any other question that was nice answer incidentally let me tell you i didn't show you a slide you know Uh, uh that was the first slide uh, i didn't show you uh, my i didn't talk about my second career and in my second career that is i'm now uh, writing a lot for media and i can write their uh, annual confidential report what they do or what they don't do you know okay uh, so the slide that we show first is there's a great general called napoleon bonaparte you know i'm sure you know him a french general who yes. uh, beat the hell out of britishers etc so he had said about 100 years back that four hostile newspapers are to be feared more than uh, 10000 enemy soldiers so 10000 enemy soldiers is equal to four hostile newspapers now napoleon said it when 100 years back and when he said <laughs> there used to be only few newspapers you know now there is a newspaper in every in every gully you know there are so many newspapers maharashtra got um, there are more than 150 newspapers which has got a circulation of more than 1 lakh So what is their equivalent to the Indian Army or to the armed forces? And what about TV channels? There are seven fifty news channels which keep on giving you, bombarding you with news. You know. So uh, what is there? And there's a bhasma sur called social media where anybody can express views on any subject where you think you are an expert. So uh, media information warfare is one of the most important strategies of they call China uses what is called as a three war strategy. I don't want to get into that. If you're interested in that strategy. Go on to my YouTube, and you see that I have spoken about a lot about hybrid war which China does against us, grey zone warfare that China is doing against us, multi-domain warfare. But those are longish topics. But if you are interested, uh, my uh, the, uh, go on the YouTube. They are there. Uh, they are in uh, English, Marathi, Hindi. So whichever language uh, suits you, you can go there. And every week I put about at least three to four uh, new topics. We comment upon the topics which are trending. You know. so all that i can tell you is media presently is not on the right lines okay himan yeah, swas wants else? to ask yeah. something swas is asking yeah. something yeah yeah sir i don't believe that you can believe everything that dd says because doordarshan is controlled by the party in power i mean the government 
all their budget, everything is controlled by the party in power. And they are going to say exactly what the party in power wants to say. I, so this is my uh, take on the DD. It's a debatable question. When Congress was in power, it is, it is a debatable. Uh, okay, okay. Let me tell you. Uh, I, I don't. Look, uh, uh, whichever party is in power, let me be very clear on this issue. There is no different opinions as far as the national security is concerned. There is only okay. one policy, and that is defend your country. That's no, all. No, that's By all true. means. By it's all not, means. So, so Congress not. cannot have any policies, or BJP cannot have any policies, or Shiv Sena cannot have any policies. If they have a policy. Okay. Uh, something else uh, that is uh, wrong. So, uh, no, uh, 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 forget about the political parties. I'll not get into the political domain. You can argue till the time the cows come home, you know, and without achieving anything. All that I can tell you is remain nationalist, national interest are supreme. Do not that, uh, spend your that, time that, in defending. That, that, that yeah. I totally agree. National. No, I'll, just, I, I'll, just give you, I'll just give you one example since uh, you know, we don't want to talk about uh, you know, political issues, etc. Now, there are political parties demanding uh, the taking away of Armed Forces Special Powers Act. There are political parties, uh, if you see there, uh, uh, if you have seen the, uh, you know, in fact, since you uh, since all of us vote, you know, I recommend that before voting, you uh, kindly see the policy. Suppose today uh, a party is in power. Tomorrow somebody else will come. That is the power of the uh, voting, you know. Now, what is the uh, what is that uh, Congress party is saying about Kashmir? Please read it. And tell me, do you agree or not? But please uh, read what is uh, uh, Congress Party or Communist Party's policy on inf illegal infiltration of Bangladesh. Okay, please tell me what is their policies with regard to Naxalism. You know, I I'm re relating only myself to the uh, security angle. Well, it is not nationalist. That's all I can tell you. Okay, uh, illegal Bangladeshi migration. Today there are more than five crore Bangladeshi today who are in India, and the number continues to go grow, and it has all been done by uh, a gang consisting of uh, right from the border areas to uh, you know uh, uh, political parties uh, to bureaucrats to uh, some part of the security forces it's it's a gang and that's all i can tell you okay uh, uh, so uh, uh, political opinions everybody is entitled to but uh, no uh, two ways about as far as uh, this is concerned and uh, controlling of media I, I can only tell you this much you remain nationalist that's all i can tell you and support anybody and everybody who is nationalist. Ask people if uh, Article 370 will be put back again or not. Ask people if will you detect that uh, I mentioned to you that are five crore Bangladeshi. Will you detect them? Will you deport them uh, to Bangladesh? Ask them the answer. Uh, uh, tell them whether you will use all your force to destroy nationalists who are uh, not stopping the country's progress. Uh, get an answer from them. Okay. Uh, so the, you can get answers. Uh, rest, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, uh, just last. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please do. Uh, unfortunately, the nationalism or nationalist is also be, uh, being defined wrongly. Either you are or you are a traitor. So that. I recommend you. You define it your way. You, you define it your way and follow it. That's all I can tell you. I can't okay. convince you. I can't convince my wife here. Why to forget about you? So I forget about it. <laughs> Uh, uh, all of you, you are sufficiently senior, sufficiently learned uh, with a fair amount of knowledge behind you. You decide what is right for you and follow it. That's all I can tell you. Don't curse. You do what you can do. And that is what country can do. And I, I sincerely believe in that. Don't curse. So-and-so did this. So-and-so did this. Well, he would have done it. I will do the right thing. And I did the right thing and I was banged by behind by a car, you know, I decided to stop at the red light, you know, and somebody uh, hit me from behind. The red light keeper is So, well, you have to pay a cost also for doing things right also. Well, all, all that I'll say is do right thing. What is right and wrong, you decide. Okay, yeah. Hey, uh, Deepak, like... la last question. Last I, question. Like, I like the way you have been uh, telling things with a perfect, uh, your views, you are expressing your views very perfectly and very strongly. I can imagine how you must have led your brigade. Oh my God, really. Very great man. Yeah. And I'm very happy to note that your brigade has gone to Congo as a celebration and you have laid the foundation for that. Really, that's a fantastic achievement. I wish you should have also be there with the brigade in Congo, but you can at least see them on video. That is something really great. I want to give formal thanks. It is not really a must. We are in a common room. But my still my formal thanks to you for telling us so many important things. I think within this one hour, we have learned so much new that it will last us for many, many years. Your advice to 
become spreaders of good information i take it from today i will do that yes thank you very yeah. much and yeah. if Deepak, now, the other one another dusra ek agenda hai ki swati swati has taken very good lead and initiative in the sanjeevan centenary challenge barobar hai swati tu purcha velela amala purcha session madhe tu guest speaker banshil ka ani amala sagalyanna tyacha baddal cha samjhavun sangaycha आणि ती कस ऍप रजिस्टर कस करायचं ते सांगायचं ऍटलिस्ट पंधरा मिनिट तू बोलशील का पुढच्या वेळेला माईक ऑन कर माईक तुझा माईक अनम्यूट कर हो ऍक्च्युली आम्ही त्यांना युट्यूब वाल्यांना सांगितलं युट्यूब कॅन रन वाल्यांना की रिक्वेस्ट केली की तुम्हीच गाईड करा एक वन साइडेड होऊ द्या आणि त्यांनी अजूनही ती ऍप म्हणजे आता लास्ट मंथला मीटिंग झाली ना या महिन्यातच सुरुवातीला मीटिंग झाली तर आम्ही म्हटलं एक कॉमन रूम होऊ द्या सो दॅट कुणालाही प्रॉब्लेम येणार नाही रजिस्ट्रेशनसाठी रजिस्टर करताय पण प्रोसेस पेमेंटचाच प्रॉब्लेम होत आहे म्हणजे तर पेमेंट प्रोसेस होत नाहीये असं बरंच झालंय आणि आपण त्यांना पे केलंय सर त्याबद्दल ना हे सॉर्ट आउट करायला ते हे जबाबदार आहे तर इज आपण त्यांना पेमेंट करणार आहे सो ही दे हॅव टू टेक दिस इनिशिएटिव्ह आणि मी आणि क्रांती त्यांचे विचार वेग म्हणजे आम्ही बोलणार पण ते वेगळं पडणार तो जो जो हँडल करता यू टू कॅन रन ते व्यवस्थित आपल्याला गाईड करतील वन शॉट असं म्हणायचं आणि कुणालाही प्रॉब्लेम आला तर ते प्रत्येकाने यू टू कॅन रन सपोर्ट त्यांनी ईमेल आय डी दिलाय त्यांना तुम्ही फॅक्ट तुम्ही तुमचे फ्रिक्वेंटली आज क्वेश्चन विचारू शकतात कारण की आम्ही आम्ही दोघीच त्यांना विचारतोय प्रश्न असं व्हायला नको आजकालच्या धकाधकीच्या जीवनात लोक काही तेवढी तसदी घेणार नाही त्यांना फोन करायची आपण त्यांनाच फोन नाही करायचं सर चॅनेलवर आणून नाही करत लोक आपण त्यांना ह्या चॅनेलवर आणू आपण त्यांना कॉमन रूम मध्ये तू त्यांना बोलव नेक्स्ट कॉमन रूम कॉल देअर मॅन अँड लेट हिम गाईड एव्हरीबडी हे युट्यूब वर जाईल युट्यूब वर सगळ्यांना अवेलेबल राहील अरेंज हिज गायडन्स फॉर फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी मिनिट्स इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन वी विल गिव्ह यू गिव्ह दम दॅट टाइम टेल दम दॅट यू हॅव टू गाईड पहिले स्टार्ट पासून मोबाईल दाखवून ऍप कसं वापरायचं पाहिजे तर पॉवर पॉईंट प्रेझेंटेशन करा आणि ते सगळं दाखवा झूम मीटिंग मध्ये लोकांना प्रश्न पडत आहेत फॉरेनर्स आर नॉट एबल टू रजिस्टर हे बरोबर नाही तर तू जरा ह्याचा प्रयत्न करतेस का मी त्यांना त्याच्यात त्या म्हणजे याच्यात ग्रुप मध्ये टाकते जो आमचा करस्पॉन्डन्स ग्रुप आहे त्याच्यात प्रश्न चालेल कर चालेल आणि मला नंतर त्याचं उत्तर दे मग आपण तशी अनाउन्समेंट करू की पुढची पुढची संडेची मीटिंग विल बी डिवोटेड ओनली टू संजीवन सेंटर दे वी चॅलेंज रजिस्ट्रेशन प्रोसिजर अँड ऑल द प्रॉब्लेम फेस हो चालेल मी कन्व्हे करते सर व्यंकट सरांना गुड गुड थँक्यू थँक्यू सुहास सुहास आर यू देअर नाव यू कॅन टेक ओव्हर बोलो सुहास मला विशेष काही म्हणायचं नाही आय जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू इंटरॅक्ट बिकॉज इट ऑलमोस्ट साऊंडेड दॅट वे हिस्ट्री इज अ बॅड सब्जेक्ट यू शुड नॉट बी टॉट इन द स्कूल अँड थिंग्स लाईक दॅट सॉरी एज्युकेशन मिनिस्टर कोण होता बघा स्वातंत्र्यानंतर शिवाजी महाराज आय एक्सेप्ट नो इन महेंद्र दारून ऑल लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स हॅव बीन फाउंड आउट इट्स नॉट बुलशेट इट्स अ हिस्ट्री इट्स अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया अँड वी मे हिस्ट्रीर असेसमेंट इव्हॅल्युएशन शिवाजी महाराज वेड मिनिट शिवाजी महाराज फॉर एक्झाम्पल इन हिस्ट्री वी वेअर टॉट इंडिया हॅड डेव्हलप्ड ओनली आयर्न अँड कॉपर अँड ब्रॉन्झ आयर्न केम फ्रॉम दोमॅडिक अशोका पिलर इन कुतुब मिनार इज अ 
finest example of uh, iron uh, known in india please again i was saying nay nay ayurveda is born i don't know how long ago we are using loha bhasma in the medicines no again i mean even if you don't go to ayurveda the uh, uh, fact that you can see the ashoka pillar in uh, kutub minar area is a Uh, sort of it was not of, imported. It was made in India. <laughs> correct. Who is saying that is not imported? So we, unless we know that history, we will not be able. So it's not that nobody says that iron we didn't know. Nobody now says. till date, now till date, we have no history. I mean, no Tata involved in the history book. They have got a big history, Tata. Of course. But then, the as, as, as Deepak is saying, the Mughal and all those people they have been involved in the history book. I don't understand why. we are not sitting and planning things properly only some few to 10 15 heads are sitting and planning the things it's not planning a, it's random is is about writing of the history and teaching of history is a two different things one is writing the history and one is teaching the history as a subject no that is true at the end i am teacher amala shaade again i like the lunch itihas kaise so i am concerned about what is reaching me I am not no, concerned again, about who wrote it. Uh, what race no, reached me? Again, in services we have what is called the military history, where all Correct. the old happen and all are studied. Yes, yes. But yes. but one thing is there. One thing is there that you just draw some lessons because next war may not be exactly the same. Correct. But does it mean that you you don't uh, read the history? So again, uh, military history, military geography, in right from India days, are two very very important subjects. History is a good uh, teacher. History course, is a good teacher. Yeah. Of course, history, I mean, history, I don't know. History, 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 तेज पुण्य हो शरीर स्पार्क निकता है मोगल बिगल है खरी हिस्ट्री घड़े फ्रपति शिवाजी महाराज कहना शिकवा पद्धति वरुण if pe peshwe i mean if uh, somebody asks a question if british had not come into india what would have happened to india peshwe and the answer is peshwe ne maratha samrajya purna hindustana sthapan kelo hota have we taught this correct he khare par he sangat nahi to itihasat sangat nahi he sangayla pahije marathanni kiti pragati keli hoti he sangayla pahije sangat nahi itihas hai na इतिहास सिलेक्टिवली नहीं संगाला पाजे इतिहास करा व्यवस्थित संगाला पाजे व्यवस्थित संगाला पाजे तो सगरा एडिट के लिए ला इतिहास है अन्य अल्टर के लिए ला इतिहास है सगरा इंटेंशनली इंटेंशनली शिकोले ला इतिहास है इंटेंशनली नहीं ते बोलो ते टेंशन आज समबडी टॉक अबाउट नेपोलियन बोना पाटे पन महाजी श मिलिटरी स्टडीज गुड वसंत काय बाकी व्हिडिओ कशी वाटली चांगली झाली व्हिडिओ तुझी छान वाटली पण मला आता आज जे हेमंत ने ज्या पद्धतीने केलं ते बघितलं इट वॉज थिंग इट वॉज एन एक्सपिरियन्स एज फॉर एज आय एम कन्सर्न तर मला हे बघायला पाहिजे की इथे संक्षिप्त आणि फुलनेस असलेल्या भाषेत कसं बोलता येतं तर दिस आय विल डू एज अ पार्ट ऑफ इम्प्रुवमेंट इट इट नीड्स अ ग्रा टू लॉट ऑफ इम्प्रुवमेंट Normal. I could have done that whole uh, video in about maybe forty-five minutes or fifty minutes, yes. instead of one hour and fifty-six minutes. Yes, yes. Anyway, chala chata chata apur mala ke hi meeting thambo ya. Unless somebody wants to say something, Bala Krishna, do you want to say something? Otherwise, we just say bye till next Sunday. Yes, yes, yes. Chalo, bye bye. Swati, bye. bye. Thank you for your points, Ross. Thank you for your points. Thank you, thank you. Bye bye.
बाय 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 थैंक्स लॉट थैंक यू बाय